And good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm one of the first meteorologists, Nick Stewart. The Earth is a very beautiful thing. We have this thing called the atmosphere, an outer layer that is all of the air that we breathe also protects us from a lot of the harmful effects of outer space. The atmosphere is something that's very, very unique to planet Earth, at least here in our solar system. And of course, like anything in science meteorology, it's not all cut and dry as just the atmosphere. There's multiple layers involved. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the atmosphere. What it all starts off is, again, it's an area around the Earth that is where all the air that we breathe is sitting. The atmosphere is made up of five different layers that extend from the very surface of the Earth all the way up to 120,000 miles up. A uh, atmosphere is very, very large. That distance is about halfway to the moon. Now, the lowest level of the atmosphere is the one that we tend to care about the most. That is the troposphere. It goes from the surface to about six miles up. Now, that's very important to us because the troposphere is where all the cool stuff happens. That's where all the weather happens. That's where we do see thunderstorms, rain, snowstorms, hurricanes, tornadoes. All of that happens in the troposphere. Now, also important is that 99% of all the water vapor in the atmosphere is found in the troposphere. And that's, again, where we find most, not all, but almost all of the clouds are found in the troposphere. And the other thing with the troposphere is that the higher up that you go, the colder it gets. Now the layer that's right above the troposphere, that is the stratosphere. That goes from about six miles up all the way up to about 30 miles up. Now the uh, stratosphere is very important because that's where the ozone layer is. The ozone layer is a layer in the atmosphere that protects us from a lot of the really harmful energy that comes from the sun. Now, we still need to use sunscreen, of course. Some things get through, but the ozone layer does protect a lot of us. Also, the stratosphere is where airplanes tend to fly. If you've ever taken a big flight across country, you're flying in the stratosphere. Why? Well, because all the weather, again, is below you. So generally speaking, the air is a lot smoother in the stratosphere. And as you go higher up in the stratosphere, the air is actually getting warmer, mainly because the ozone layer is absorbing all that energy from the sun. One level higher. That is where we have the mesosphere. Now, that goes from about 30 miles up all the way up to 53 miles up. The mesosphere, typically speaking, is where all the meteors break up. If you're ever watching a meteor shower on a nice, clear night, well, that is where they're mostly occurring, is up in the mesosphere. Now, other thing to note is that the mesosphere is actually where the coldest air on Earth is located. It's about 130 degrees below zero up in the mesosphere. And the other important thing to note there is that the air is too thin to breathe. There is air there. However, it's not very dense. The molecules are a lot farther apart, so we cannot actually breathe in the mesosphere. The air is just too thin. You go one level up, that is what we call the thermosphere. I like to call this the space layer because this is a lot of times where space begins. One thing about the thermosphere, it goes from 53 miles up all the way up to 600 miles up. The thermosphere is pretty big. It's very hot as well. When I say hot, the actual temperature of all the air molecules could be up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Very, very hot. But because there's not a lot of air there, the oxygen that we breathe, the molecules are very spread apart. You really don't feel the heat, so it actually feels cold. Now, the other thing to note is that in the thermosphere, up that high, that's where many satellites are orbiting. That's also where you can find the International Space Station, the orbiting laboratory, space laboratory, where we do have humans actually orbiting the Earth at about 17,500 miles an hour. We do a lot of awesome experiments up in the International Space Station. And one final note, if you've ever seen the Northern Lights, we also call them the auroras, they're actually occurring up in the thermosphere of our atmosphere. One level higher, and this is the topmost layer of the atmosphere, that is the exosphere. Now, the exosphere is big. It goes from about 600 miles up all the way up to 120,000 miles up. The exosphere is very, very large. However, there's actually very little air up in the exosphere. The air molecules are very widely scattered up there, and that actually is where a lot of the air molecules that we breathe are actually escaping up into space. Now, the other thing to note is that most of our satellites 
are orbiting up in the atmosphere. That does include weather satellites. That also includes communication satellites that uh, we would normally use to look at things like television and internet. We actually have live views from the atmosphere, courtesy of these satellites. If we could pull up the scan do, that is the view from GOES-16. It's one of our weather satellites that we use on a daily basis. And that is a view of Earth from the exosphere. The gorgeous planet that we live on there. And of course, you can see all the clouds happening there. That is in the troposphere, but you're actually viewing it from the exosphere. So to recap, let's take a look at the graphics one more time. The atmosphere here. Again, this is not to scale, but the troposphere, the lowest level, that's where the clouds are happening. That's where all the weather happens. It goes from the surface to about six miles up. The next level, the stratosphere. That's where the ozone layer is. And the very bottom of the stratosphere is where you find the jet stream. We talked about the jet stream before and the water cycle lesson. The jet stream is what brings in all the moisture up into the upper Midwest from the oceans. That's also what brings in the warm air and the colder, why temperatures change so much. One level up, that's a mesosphere. That's where you can find all the meteors happening. The mesosphere is also the coldest air on Earth, about 130 degrees below zero. Very, very cold up in the mesosphere. One layer up, that's the thermosphere. That's where a lot of weather satellites orbit. That's where the International Space Station orbits. That's also the hottest layer of the atmosphere, about 1,000 degrees to 3,500 degrees. And the layer right above that, finally, is the exosphere. It goes from about 600 meters up all the way up to 120,000 miles up. It is a very, very large area of the atmosphere. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the troposphere. Again, that's where all the fun stuff happens. That's where all the weather happens. We're going to show you how to make a little example, a little model of the troposphere. So here's kind of what I have here, a little diagram that we're going to help build. I have one already pre-built to kind of use as a guide here. But what you're looking at here is essentially a model of the troposphere. Again, that's where all the weather happens. What you have here is an area of low pressure, area of high pressure. And at the area of low pressure, the air is rising. At a high pressure, the air is falling here. So what's happening in the troposphere is that the air isn't stagnant. The air is constantly moving. And that is one of the reasons why all the weather happens here. And then, of course, around the areas of low pressure, you have air circulating what we call counterclockwise. Around the air of high pressure, we have it circling what's called clockwise, so in the same way that a clock would rotate. And at the very top of the atmosphere, we have the jet stream that we talked about. This piece of paper is essentially the line between the troposphere and the stratosphere. So over areas of high pressure, we have an upper level low. And above an area of low pressure, we have an upper level high, a jet stream doing just that. So let's show you this little model and how you can make it for yourself. So what you're going to need are a few little utensils here. You're going to need move the camera here to make it easy for you. You're going to need a stapler a pair of scissors, and some Sharpies. Um, generally speaking, you can just get away with using just one color, just black, but I like to make it a little bit more colorful. So a blue and a red Sharpie would work. You also need, again, a stapler and a pair of scissors. And you need about six pieces of paper, ideally cardstock, since it's a little thicker, a little firmer, that actually can support this. But any piece of paper can work if you try hard enough. So what we're going to start off is with a base layer. That is what we're going to put on as the troposphere here. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw out uh, the atmosphere here. So at the troposphere, we're going to have at the surface an area of low pressure. So we'll start off with a big L here. That's again where an area of low pressure is. And around the area of low pressure, we've done this before, we've had what's called the warm front. So the warm front extends from the area of low pressure. And it's drawn something like so. And again, the air, the warm fronts bring in the warm, moist air. So around the air, the air of low pressure, we have an arrow drawn like this. And then this is again warm and moist air. Now on the bottom side of areas of low pressure, we have a big cold front, strong cold front here. And this is what brings in those really cold temperatures, a lot like what we're seeing today compared to the weekend. That's all because a really strong cold front came overhead. Now, on the other side, air goes. We talked about this in the water cycle. We also talked about this in the wind lesson. Air likes to go from high pressure to low pressure. But also, again, air circulates around the highs. So we're going to draw some arrows here around the area of high pressure. 
And again, that's what the surface of the atmosphere looks like. High pressures and low pressures and all the air circulating there. But of course, again, the air that we look at, it's not just all at the surface. The air goes up to all the way about six miles. Again, that's the top of the troposphere. So what we need to do is illustrate how the air is rising. So we're going to take another piece of cardstock paper here. And again, cardstock works best because it's a little bit firmer. And what we're going to do is take this piece of paper. We're going to fold it once in half in landscape size. And then we're going to fold it one more time. So ultimately folding it twice. And what we're going to have is a piece of paper. You can see it's folded four ways. We're going to take one of those, bend it the other way. Basically make a triangle out of that piece of paper here. So we're going to use this as like a column of air. Now you can tape it if that works for you. I think a stapler works best. So what we're going to do is just kind of staple this together. So we have one little triangle here. And there you have the column of air rising out of the high pressure. We're going to make one more of these. So again, take the cardstock piece of paper, fold it in half, and we're going to fold it again. And again, what we're making here is a model of the troposphere. This is actually something really cool. Uh, younger, I really wish I had something like this because it would make a lot more sense. It helps make the weather have a, make a lot more sense. So again, we'll staple that. So what we have here, again, are two columns of air. So what's happening again above an air of low pressure. So we're going to take this column. We can take a look at this here. We're going to drop that uh, column of air right over the low pressure. There's other column of air that's going to sit right over the air of high pressure. So what's happening here at the surface, we're going to use our black Sharpie here. As, uh, again, we have an area of low pressure. That's at the very bottom here. We're just going to put in that overhead. At the air of low pressure, air is what we call converging. So air is going towards the air of low pressure. The air has to go somewhere. It can't go to the bottom because that's where the ground is. You can't go down. So what that air has to do? Well, it has to rise. So what we're going to do is draw an arrow up. And just like that, you have air rising at an air of low pressure. Now at the area of high pressure, air is spreading out from the high and has, again, it can't pull air from the ground. So that means it has to come from the top. So what we're going to do is draw a big arrow down. That's sinking air. At the air of high pressure, the air is what we call diverging or spreading apart. So there we go. So there we have a little model there. Now at the low pressure, again, the air is rising. And as we talked about in the water cycle lesson, when air is rising, something's happening there. That tends to be storms. So around the air of low pressure, what we could put is something like clouds, storms. We can put a little sad face there because that's usually where a lot of bad weather is. That's not good times there. Low air is low pressure. That's not really pleasant weather. The part of the reason we're dealing with the rain today is because a uh, strong air of low pressure is kind of in the area creating those showers. Now in high pressure, that's usually where really nice weather is. So we'll put a nice happy face there. High pressure means good weather. That means sunshine, so sunny skies, and clear. So we have that little level of the atmosphere there. And then at the very, very top, so at the very top of the atmosphere, we have what's again called the tropopause, or that's actually more so the layer between the troposphere as well as the stratosphere. So we'll take one more piece of paper, again, at the very bottom level of the stratosphere is what we call the jet stream. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to take this sheet of paper I drew earlier. And what you see is, again, a jet stream. So that is the layer that's going to go right on top of this model, sits right up on top. And what we're happening here is, I'll take a look at this camera, we'll kind of zoom a little bit wider. And what you're going to see here is kind of a, that cycle that's happening in the troposphere. So area of low pressure here, the air is rising at the low. And then at the air of high pressure, the air is sinking at the high pressure. So it's kind of like a, a cycle here. The air is kind of going in a big cycle to kind of show you that the air inside the troposphere, it doesn't stay the same. And that's part of the reason why we have the weather that we do have because, again, uh, a lot of cool stuff is going on with the way that the air is forced to move. And the reason why we have weather in the lowest level of the atmosphere, the troposphere, is because we have airs of high pressure, airs of low pressure, and all that air continues to move. So that's a little model that you can keep. That little quick one I did uh, didn't look as good as the original one that I spent a little bit more time on earlier uh, in the day today. But here we go. Two little models of the atmosphere there. 
Well, I hope you found this lesson kind of interesting. Uh, the atmosphere, again, on planet Earth is very, very complicated. There's a lot of different layers to it, and each layer is a little bit different. Each layer has something that's a little bit more important, and each layer has something uh, that kind of attributes to life on Earth. Why life itself is a able to live on Earth is because of those different levels of the atmosphere. Thank you for watching everybody. Meteorologist Rebecca Coltman will have another Weather First workbook on Thursday, same time at 10.30 a.m. right here on Iowa's News Now. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe and stay healthy.